Gaily bedight a gallant knight, in sunshine and in shadow, had journeyed long, singing a song, in search of El Dorado. But he grew old, this knight so bold, and o'er his heart a shadow, fell as he found no spot of ground that looked like El Dorado. And as his strength failed him at length, he met a pilgrim shadow. Shadow, said he, where can it be, this land of El Dorado? O'er the mountains of the moon, down the valley of the shadows. Ride, bully, ride, the shade replied, if you seek for El Dorado. Hey guys, it's Brian, your friendly neighborhood reviewer, and I am here today to discuss ELO's, or Electric Light Orchestra, if you want to say that, ELO's uh, fourth album, El Dorado. Got a really good copy here. This is the original copy, uh, originally released on United Artists Records, uh, later released on Jet when it released their catalog, when they got really huge, which they did in the 70s. So we've got... Iconic cover. This is, of course, taken from The Wizard of Oz, where, uh, you know, Wicked Witch is trying to get the ruby slippers from Dorothy and, you know, a little electric, electricity magic happens. Great cover. Iconic. You can't, you can't go wrong with that. You know, backside, same thing, but with the song titles and all that. It did have an inner lyric sleeve. Nicely pulled, really cool done. Picture of the group right there. Really interesting with the ELO. I'll go ahead and, uh, before I talk about it, yeah, the old, uh, do it this way, United Artist label there, 70s, yeah, really cool. But, uh, really cool. All right. First of all, since I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about ELO, offshoot of a British group called The Move with Rory Wood, who's originated that group, really popping in Britain. If you know the ELO song, Do You, you know, Do Do You Want My Love and all that, that was actually the Move song that, that Jeff Lynne recorded and redid on New World Record and became a hit. Um, again, the Move were extremely popular in Britain. They would, they're kind of like the Who. They'd smash up their instruments and TV sets and all this kind of weird stuff. But, um, but Roy Wood had this idea of, of doing an offshoot group where he would pick up where the Beatles' Eye and the Walrus left off. That's the big famous quote that he did. So he went with newest member of the move, Jeff Lynn, and recorded uh, the first album with the drummer Bev Bevan. The, those three, of course, Roy Wood, Jeff Lynn, Bev Bevan, were the core. Really cool album, their first album. Very unusual sounding. Very kind of like a, I think one critic called it rough and tumble chamber, chamber music, something like that. Very unusual sound. Uh, it was a hit in Britain more so than here. And then uh, by the second album. Jeff Lynn had taken over. Rory Wood had quit because he wanted to do something else. He formed a Wizard, another group. So Jeff Lynn started with the second album, developing the ELO sound that most people know from the top 40. The second album was more of a prog rock album, so it was a little unusual, but it did have the hit uh, Roll Over Beethoven, the, uh, the Chuck Berry number that he incorporates uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Really clever. Then they did the third album on the third day, which, again, developed. that was the album that really started the ELO sound especially on the side one suite where you kind of hear a lot of those elements that come to fruition on El Dorado. So by the time this album, he took that springboard from that album and some success he had and wanted to develop a full-blown Beatles kind of album. So he took a kind of like a vague fairy tale, medieval kind of storyline and incorporated it through uh, the lyrics and the music and all that, developed the music. Went through with uh, Lewis uh, Clark, I think it was. Yes, Lewis Clark. Uh, he uh, worked out the arrangements for this. I mean, it's dubbed a symphony by ELO, so it's kind of a little ambitious thing. But um, basically he takes these songs, incorporates a whole orchestral suite with them, and, and does a really good job bringing this together as a whole. Really well-crafted album. Really good melodies, a really good uh, job he does on this. So that's really cool. Still has the main group, you, you know, which is, uh, of course, Jeff Lynn, you know, the main songwriter, guitarist, singer, and all that. Which his singing is extraordinary. This He's really good, uh, really comes alive on this album as far as the singing. And then Bev Bevan, who's the drummer, a really good drummer, excellent drummer, has a really unique sound, and you can definitely hear it throughout every ELO album. He's a very uh, integral part of that sound that uh, Jeff Lynn was able to get. Then you've got um, Richard Tandy, who's the keyboardist. 
and uh, he stuck around too for the entire, pretty much the entire run. Mike Delbuquerque, who was on bass, uh, kind of left during this album a little bit. Got tired of the road and being out of family and stuff. So, actually, Jeff Lynne actually does a lot of the bass playing on this. Uh, the album still did feature also their three main violinists, cello and players, and all that. Uh, Hugh McDowell and um, let me see if I can get this right. Hugh McDowell, Michael Edward, and of course, Mick Kaminsky. Mick Kaminsky had that uh, cool blue violin that he would play with. He became very famous for when he toured with ELO and all that, and it was really cool. So they had their main players as well still, but augmented by a small, uh, I think, 40-piece orchestra, if I'm not mistaken. So it works really well. It fleshes out the sound. It gives it a chamber sound that's not cramped up. It really expands it out really well. So so what is this album? Well, first of all, number one, it's a flat-out masterpiece. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. This is definitely one you have to have in your collection. Of course, the big hit single off was Can't Get It On My Head. That was their first top ten hit, a fantastic number. Kind of, it was really good, sets the tone for the album anyway. But, um, and it's actually, ex- except for the uh, overture, the Eldorado overture, it flows right into that song. And again, great song. Ties together this like Robin Hood and uh, William Tell and King Arthur and all this stuff, all this fantasy stuff. It's not like the episode of Once Upon a Time or something. But, um, it works well in this theme. So the, from that song, you go to Boy Blue, again, great rocker. Uh, Laredo, Tur- Laredo Tornado, which is another great song. Great riff on that, guitar riff on that. Um, Boy Boy, which is, again, ties together that medieval fairy tale kind of theme that goes on through the album. Boy Boy is a great number, great little rocker that closes side one. Um, side two starts with one of my absolute favorite ELO songs of all time, Mr. Kingdom. A great number, a good, solid ballad. Again, talking about dream worlds and fantasy and all that stuff, but um, incorporating that. Really well done. The escalation of the orchestra at the end is just really cool how he does it, and then goes right into the next song, Nobody's Child, which is probably the, the nadir, nadir of the album, if you want to call it. But I, it's, if, that's the, if that's the worst song of the album, then <laughs> this is a great album. Nobody's Child is a really good, kind of almost like a... a Kind of like an R&B kind of sleazy kind of thing, you know, talking about sleazy little number. Um, talking about painted ladies and all that stuff. So it kind of has that little, you know, backroom feel to it without abandoning the orchestral and the, 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 the key motives that occur through this album. But that's that's a good song. That's a really good song. That's a cool number. And then from that it goes into Illusions in G Major, which, again, great Chuck Berry kind of styled rocker, which, which Jeff Lynn can do in his sleep. But really, really well done. And again, tying that theme element of the fantasy world with the reality world with this medieval concept and all that stuff. Uh, it's really good. Good. Uh, he, he does really well with that and the lyrics and the music. And then, of course, it ends with uh, the El Dorado, the title track. Well, it doesn't end with it. You get the finale. But uh, the title track, El Dorado, that is one where his vocals is absolutely amazing. I, I dare anybody to try to sing that song. Uh, that's a heck of a song to sing. Great song and the passion and emotion he gets in that. And it ties together everything in the entire album as far as all the themes, starting with Can't Get It Out of My Head on all the way up to El Dorado. It's, it's, it's a really well-constructed, flowing album. It, uh, kind of like Days of Future Past with the Moody Blues when they came out with that. The Moody Blues was one of the first ones to try to tie an orchestral with a rock group. Now, I, I love Days of Future Past, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of herky-jerky. Because you get orchestra passage in the song, orchestra passage in the song. Here, it's it's a lot more fleshed out. You could actually, kind of like with the Beach Boys' pet sounds, you could actually sit down and play the score if you really had the score. So that that really works well. This is one of the really good prog rock albums, one of the really good uh, landmarks, cornerstones, you might say. Um, and it really does really illustrate, illustrate Jeff Lynne's um, genius, I guess you might say. Group is amazing, production is amazing, cover is amazing, lyrics are great, really cool album. Uh, definitely need to have this in your collection. Uh, if you don't know, I mean, you might start with something else to be low, but you, you're not going to go wrong with this. This is just a classic album. All right, cool. Hope you like the vinyl showcase. Uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the album review. Like I said, really check out ELO. One, a really great group. This is one of my favorite albums. Fantastic album. Like I said, five out of five. <laughs> it's classic. 
but yeah, definitely pick it up. And it's not that expensive. Again, uh, you can get an original copy, right? Less than ten bucks or so, maybe ten bucks. Uh, but anyway, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate the uh, the like, subscribe, and all of that. Enjoy doing this. Hope you enjoy it too. Check out my buddy David Darko's channel. We have a lot of fun with that channel. All the crazy stuff that goes on in the world we talk about, and just a lot of fun stuff and things on that. But uh, definitely check us out. Really good channel. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Awesome.